Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you a example of using a scriptable object as a store of data that can be shared across different game objects inside of your game without those game objects individually having to talk to each other. So we have a character Bob the checkmark that has a reference to the player stats scriptable object but doesn't know anything about these other UI elements that are dependent on the same player stats game object. So the health text here will respond to the health value changing inside the player stats. The deal 10 will decrease the health value of the player stats and the Bob the check mark will destroy itself when the health value reaches zero. So one of the important things to know about scriptable objects is that if you change a value at runtime and you exit out of play mode, that those values that are set to the fields are still going to persist even after the game stops running. So that's why instead of having the actual in-game health, strength, faith field values here, these are default initialized values. So the game initializer, when the game starts, will take that same player stats scriptable object and set the active property values to the default values that we customize in the inspector for that scriptable object. So that's four objects that reference the same scriptable object, but use them in different ways. So just to demo here, the deal 10 button, as you can see, deals 10 damage to the player. If we look at the scriptable object, note that this default value has not changed because we're not changing these field values, we're changing the runtime property value. So let's keep decreasing the health until we hit zero. And uh, when the player's health is zero, we destroy the game object. And once again, none of these objects know anything at all about each other. They just all reference the same set of stats in the player scriptable object. So if we take a look at the code here for the scriptable object standard setup, we have the create asset menu so that you can create additional instances of a scriptable object in your assets folder through the menu, right click scriptable objects tutorial three player stats. Down here, we have the default fields. Note that these are private, so we can't change them during runtime in a, another script. But we do serialize them with serialize field so that we can edit them in the inspector. So we can change our default values outside of the game, but other game objects can't mess with the values, which is probably what you want. So then for the actual runtime values that the scriptable object is going to have, we have the properties health, strength, and faith. And these are initialized to their defaults through the init defaults function down here. So health property becomes the health default, strength becomes the strength default, and faith becomes the faith default. So this function is actually being called by the game initializer. So if I go over to this, it's just a simple mono behavior script, references the same player stats, and then we initialize the game, which in this case is just setting the stats to their defaults. So when the scene loads, this game object is going to run its on awake function, and then the stats are going to be set to their defaults. So this will trigger before any other object runs their start function. So if there was a start function in another script that uh, was dependent on the stats being initialized, they should already be done so because awake runs before start. Okay, so then the other thing about the player stats here is that I added a Unity action. So this is an event where we can subscribe to it, having different functions run whenever health changed is invoked. So health changed during the set function of the property. If the value is a new value, then we're going to change the current health value. So note this is active health, not the serialized inspector health value, but a runtime value for the health. And so if the value changed, we want to invoke health changed to make sure that anything that is dependent on the health changing to, let's say, display text would uh, know about the new health value. And then right here, you have the Unity action for doing that. So there's Unity events and Unity actions. The difference would be that a uh, Unity event, you'd be able to set up uh, functions to run when the event is invoked inside of the inspector, but a Unity action is not. In this case, I just want to make sure that everything that subscribes to this does it during runtime and that we don't have an option of setting that up in the inspector. So that's why I'm using a Unity action instead of a Unity event. So then the other scripts are quite simple. So the player character, you can see uh, we have the player stats. We are subscribing to that Unity action by giving it a delegate method. So check if alive when this runs, it's going to use the new health value to see if we should destroy the game object. So if the new health value is zero, we destroy the game object. And 
I make sure that if this object is enabled, that it's going to run this whenever health is changed. And if this game object is disabled, then we remove that delegate. And this bit actually here isn't doing anything because I'm uh, actually adjusting the value through the health button. So the damage target stats is how I commit the damage to the health value or the health property on the player stats. So this is the script attached to the button. So we can have the on click call commit damage, which is going to deal the damage amount to the target stats health, which means basically the health value of the player is going to take 10 damage whenever the button is clicked. And then lastly, we have uh, the UI manager. So currently this only has one piece of text to update. So that's the health display, but taking the player stats scriptable object we can use that to adjust things in our UI. So it would be very easy to just add another referenced UI field here, and then make sure that we have that be updated on things like health changed or strength changed, faith changed, stuff like that, updating our UI to whatever the values inside of our scriptable object would be. But in this case, we just start the game by having the health text display set to the health value from the player stats object. And then we have the update health display method, which is going to be called whenever the health is changed. So we take the new value and we set that to be the text on the display. And that's really all that's going on here. So why the scriptable object is so powerful in this way is that if let's say you had the health value stored directly on the player character, then you would have to have other objects such as the game initializer need to know about the player character so that it could set the health value on the player character. So you need to find the game object and the game initializer. You need to find the game object in the UI manager and possibly the health button as well, though you could have the health button just be managed by the UI manager uh, if you wanted to. But you'd have to have the UI need to directly know about the player game object and other game objects that care about the player character, like the game initializer, would also have to know directly about this script on the player game object. So you can see how that way of doing things without the scriptable object would couple your code together. And then if one thing is missing, things can break. So the other thing that's really strong here about the player stats being a scriptable object is that it's not tied to our scene directly. So if we change scenes like loading a new game level, then our player stats are still going to persist. They exist in our assets folder of the project. So we load a new scene and then we can set everything up using the same player stats value. They haven't changed. They haven't gone anywhere. So that means we don't have to worry about our data disappearing when we change scenes. So hopefully this example has given you some ideas about how you can use a scriptable object effectively inside of your game project as a powerful way to share data across the different objects inside of your game. So that's pretty much going to be it for this tutorial. If you want to download all of the assets from this project, I'll have it up on my Patreon. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future Unity content.